Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is David Schlotthauer here in the weather office, keeping an eye on your weather forecast for May the 3rd, 2023. In this video, we are keeping an eye on Thursday through the weekend for severe weather for the high plains and the deep south. Now, before we do move on with the video, I do appreciate if you all can please complete the YouTube channel survey. There is a link in the description below this video. So without further ado, let's get talking about this weather pattern that is coming up for the weekend into early next week because there are changes coming with temperatures that are going to be warming up across the Midwest and even across the eastern seaboard with cooler weather continuing across the west. So here's a look at the GOES-16 True TrueColor satellite imagery provided by TropicalTidbits.com or Levi Cowan. And we've been talking about this the last few days, how this surface slow and upper level disturbance over the west has not really wanted to leave at all. And it's going to be around our area for a few more days before it finally departs and moves into the deep south and into the midwest by early next week. But before that happens, it has kind of been a pretty stagnant weather pattern. We have another disturbance over here across the northeast that continues to bring in below average temperatures and a reinforcing shot of cooler air. And anything in between here is just kind of quiet, dry, and warm. We can see this on the GFS model or on the European model when we take a look at the forecast. We can see that there is going to be severe weather that does initialize across the high plains, especially, say, from um, Kansas into Oklahoma into Texas. I'm going to watch this pretty closely because there are signs we might have a higher threat than what is currently anticipated. So if we go forward here on the European model for Thursday afternoon, we can see there are uh, thunderheads that do develop here over Oklahoma, northern Texas, some of these could contain some large hail, some strong winds, and maybe a tornado. So today, tomorrow is going to be the day that we're probably going to end up live streaming on this severe weather event since I'll have a lot of time on my hands. But maybe we'll have to see. Then by Friday, it still continues. These become more elevated over, say, Arkansas, Missouri, even northeastern um, Oklahoma. There's a surface low right there. This is kind of all elevated, part of marginal forcing along that barrel clinic zone. That kind of moves out, and then we get some calmer weather perhaps by Saturday until we get maybe into Saturday afternoon when we might see more thunderstorms really build up across Texas and Oklahoma, and this can might continue all the way through the weekend. Uh, perhaps on Sunday could be a more active day in a wider region all the way from central Texas into, say, portions there of Missouri and Iowa, and even including for Arkansas and Louisiana in portions here of Mississippi and Alabama as well. So we can see this too by the lightning density forecast. We're going to have more severe weather coming. The pattern's changing. So even for the high plains, we're expecting more lightning strikes, more thunderstorms that are anticipated. So we can see this um, each and every day, how mornings are pretty tranquil, they're dry, maybe some clouds from time to time, but then it's the afternoons when we get a lot of that daytime heating when we you when we do and get semi-discrete clustering of storms that do produce a lot of lightning, maybe some large hail, damaging wind gusts, and a tornado or two, especially over Oklahoma on Thursday. And then the same thing kind of happens down here in southern and central Texas. We get more thunderstorms and even over here across the deep south it's going to be kind of that diurnal type convective cycle that we typically see this time of the year how mornings are dry afternoons and evenings are typically stormy and we can see that there over texas and over uh, portions of oklahoma but now the thing about this is models do not handle these situations very well here's another way to look at it now what we do know is there's going to be a lot of instability. Now, uh, there's other YouTube channels out there saying that um, this is going to be a severe weather outbreak. Potentially, we're looking at extreme instability. 
Its stability could be quite strong, but I don't think it's going to be extreme. And another thing to point out too is the dynamics are not quite there for a severe weather outbreak by any means at all. We just don't have a very well-defined trough. We don't have a strong forcing mechanism for that to occur. But yes, we do have a lot of instability, and yes, we do have modest shear involved over the high plains for at least a few organized supercells. But I just don't think we're gonna have a moderate risk or a high risk for severe weather. I just don't think that's gonna occur at all, but maybe enhance risk here and there from time to time. So now let's take a look at the instability for Thursday afternoon. We have um, weak to moderate instability over Nebraska, over Kansas. It's going to be mainly this area further south when we have an uncapped environment due to a sufficient moisture return. We have destabilization, steepening mid-level lapse rates, and we have uh, some mixing that's going to be involved here over the more buoyant air mass. So we're going to see some destabilization to occur across much of Oklahoma and central uh, portion there of Texas. And again, these storms could be capable of producing some very large hail, strong winds, and maybe a tornado or two. Not particularly strong, but it wouldn't surprise me if we do get like a low end tornado threat in central Oklahoma. The instability increases further on, say, Friday and Saturday, where we have anywhere between about uh, 3,500 to 5,000 joules of thunderstorm juice. I'm not. I'm just going to simplify it because if I say joules per kilogram, you guys are not going to understand that very well. So I'm going to kind of narrow this down as much as I can. And so you can see quite a bit of thunderstorm juice across central and southern Oklahoma into central Texas. And this is going to be continuing all the way through into Sunday, into Monday. Again, the pattern is going to favor a lot of this returning flow of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And when we have steepening mid-level lapse rates, we have dry air aloft to help steepen those lapse rates. This usually yields a lot of instability that usually pops up um, every afternoon. So now on our temperature side of things, so we talked about the severe weather. We know how that's going to all evolve. But now let's talk about the weather pattern kind of in the mid to long term. Okay, this is the European ensemble forecast. And what we do know is we have a lot of cooler than normal temperatures across the eastern seaboard. We have below average temperatures across the west. This is going to continue each and every day. Let's just kind of fast forward this. We can see by the 5 to 10 day period, so from Monday morning, May 8th, through Saturday morning, May 13th, we have above average temperatures that are anticipated over the Midwest, the Deep South, and the Northern Plains, while again, the West here is going to still be stoked in the below average temperature category for a while. And this doesn't seem to change until we get to the 8 to 13 day forecast when temperatures here will still be above average, but we lose a lot of the below average temperatures likely for the West. Now, are you wondering how I make my thumbnails? If so, check out TrilogyMaps.com. Here is the promotion. I am incredibly excited to announce that I'm officially an affiliate with TrilogyMaps.com. The link will be in the description and the pinned comment below. Trilogy Maps has created the highest definition, the most customizable digital maps you can find anywhere online at a highly affordable price. These maps are so customizable due to a very unique layering system that makes it possible to create whatever map you like. Making weather maps that look incredibly professional has never been this easy before. So if you want the highest definition, the most customizable, and the most professional looking weather maps that you can make up for a very affordable price, go ahead and check out TrilogyMaps.com. And again, be sure to use my 20% off discount code by going to TrilogyMaps.com and then entering the code DAVID before finalizing your purchase. Well, anyways, if you did enjoy today's weather discussion on a detailed note, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And not only that, please consider doing my YouTube channel survey. There will be a link in the description below this video. But that's all for today's video. I will be back with you more tomorrow.